Tonight is March the 5th of 2025, and I'm going to uh, talk about one last thing tonight that I think I'm making some advancements on. I'm not sure. Um, I started out with what I called a frequency contouring by uh, messing around with the uh, the RC circuits. You know, these guys here, coupling circuits and all this kind of stuff, and time constants of them, and corner frequency, etc. Well, that was more of just an academic exercise because I couldn't measure anything different. That's not to say there isn't a difference, because I believe there is. But if you make it, if you go to extreme values, if you change your 0.22 coupling capacitor to 0.001, it's going to sound different. But other than something extreme like that, and the next video I made was about phase shift, and if you've got enough NFB in it, you've got, uh, we measured 8 degrees, I think at 20 kilohertz, I don't think I measured it at 20, but it's probably going to be the same. And that's as good as Macintosh says theirs is. So, I'm not sure what the problem with phase shift is, what we hear. That last one about uh, adjusting the uh, negative feedback, I think that one's pretty important. And that's where I'm going to stop tonight and show you what I did. And the harmonic profile. Okay. Now here's something I want your thoughts on. See this gain control right here? Okay. Let's get the schematic again. Look at this thing for real. It's, it's this guy right here. The resistor's on this side of the capacitor. This is the high pass circuit right here. Not this. But I'll tell you what. This changes how the amplifier sounds. Not dramatically, and I doubt, I, I don't know if I can hear it back here on my little speaker, but I can sure hear it on those big clipped horns. This contours the the uh, the sound to some extent, sure does. Okay, I'd like to know if you guys have noticed that. Well, this is an old 6L6G, isn't that a beauty? Look at that, got a bunch of them. I put some other tubes in, I put in the, well this is the KT88, 6L6, Sylvania, really, I mean, just, wow, good stuff. And uh, I guess a Russian made, and I think the Russian made, uh, the L34s are very good. Anyway, it measures 36 out of 25, minimum of 25, so it's, it's actually doing quite well. Um, <laughs> you know, there's just something about the old uh, old things that sound good. I wonder if there's like electrons stuck in their plates and cathodes from vintage times, you know? And they've hollowed out bigger holes in there in the anode and in the metal and everything. And and uh, it's, it's maybe there's some spirits living in it or something. I think so. Anyway, let me look at the harmonic profile. I don't know if there's any spirits in the harmonic profile, but there probably are Okay, here we go. Make this get right to the point, I hope. There's the harmonic profile of it at 3.6 watts, 2 kilohertz, uh, 2 watts. No, 2%, 1.9%. Um, now, that gain control is up all the way. I gotta, let's see, I gotta move around here just a little bit. Gotta get this guy right up here because you gotta see that really good. Let me see if I can turn that out. That might help. Oh yeah, that'll help. Because I've gotta I've gotta vary the gain coming straight out of the oscillator. Because I think I'm overdriving the front end just a little bit. Uh, but if I do it here, I mean that just that's just I think that's just textbook uh, SE. You know, if you read about the um, beam power tube, the American version, and the and the Pinto, the uh, EL34, and those harmonic profiles I ran on it, they called it the British sound or whatever, there really is something to it. There's something to it that we can measure, and there's something to it that we can hear, in my opinion. I can hear it. At least I've convinced myself I can. <laughs> but anyway, this is it. I think this is uh, the holy grail right here. See, there's a, there's a couple of watts. 
You know, that's like 110 dB. <laughs> that's loud enough. Turn it down, turn it down. Anyway, we keep going up. And uh, there, the whole chorus comes in there at 3.66 uh, watts. Very good. Anyway, I think for music creation, I'll go back to the EL34 6L6 thing. The, L the EL34 has um, got more harmonics in it. And the, uh, the 6L6 family of tubes, which really run the best in about the 30 watt range. Um, are better producers of fidelity. I bet somebody's going to disagree with that. <laughs> but uh, that's you can measure it. But that may not be, uh, you know, the way you like your tea. So anyhow, that is it. I don't have anything else to say about these things. I know that um, I've been told and I've learned that the um, component selection, tube selection, Everything is much more critical in an SE amplifier. So you can swap 6 SN7s and 5 V4s and 300 Vs and KT88s until you uh, don't have any more money. And uh, still uh, find some differences, I think. Because I think that's where we're here. And we don't hear it in push-pull because push-pull just smooths all of those, uh, those artifacts out. But somehow we like those artifacts, don't we? Okay, well, I hope this has been worth something. I know most of my viewers, you guys really like the SE stuff. And uh, I have become quite a fan of it. Well, anyway, nothing else to see. Um, I changed the... Um, let's see. Let's turn it off. Let me show you underneath it right quick. Gotta be careful of this thing. Uh, the only thing I, I, I well I changed two things one was that um, cathode resistor I changed that to 850 ohms if you look at the working schematics from decades ago like at Heathkit stuff like that you'll see that's what they use 850, 820 something like that and then I changed the uh, feedback resistor right there to uh, that parallel 2.2 and 10 gives me 1.8 which is what I want and that's it I will I will tell you one thing if you're going to build one of these that little resistor uh, right here this 75k it's a 2 watt modern version modern resistor you know but that, um, I think it's running pretty much at its max. It probably ought to be 250K parallel, one watt each of the old uh, IRC, you know, carbon composition resistors last, last forever. Or you could just really go OD on it and put two two watt 150Ks parallel. That's just a suggestion I have. I like to look under amplifiers after they've been running for a while. I've got some I need to bring out here and, and do the same thing. Just examine it. See how many rest resistors have turned white or black and or open or whatever. Okay. Well, your thoughts are always welcome and, uh, and valuable. Stay safe.